Do you remember I gave you two definitions for real numbers? Two definitions. Now you should have them there, so you don't need to rewrite them, but I've gotten rid of them off the board, so I'm going to rewrite the most important bits. Right? I hope you can see there, and maybe if you don't have it there, you should write this down. The first definition, the key part, was that any real number, you can write it as a single decimal expansion. Do you remember that? Now, let me just think about this idea for a moment, because probably when I gave you that definition, you're like, well, so what? Okay? Seeing that real numbers are a single decimal expansion helps you understand that even though I've been drawing a whole bunch of parallels between irrational numbers, like this, and complex numbers, like this, where n is just negative 1, okay, there are actually really, really big differences between them. Okay? So if you've got a calculator there, can you get it out of your bag for a second? I want you to um, notice with me Irrational numbers, do you remember I described both of these kinds of numbers to you as sort of like an oil and water mixture, okay? We said irrational numbers are famously antisocial and they're not going to mix together with the rational numbers. They're not even going to mix together with each other. However, the fact that they refuse to mix together is actually mostly a byproduct of the fact that we write them this way, okay? So just off on the side here, maybe you want to jot this down and you should calculate it with me. Let's just think of an example. Okay. Now, if I gave you an irrational number like this, this is an irrational number, okay? And I can't mix these two bits together if I write them like this. But if I write each of the numbers as a decimal expansion, it sort of blows away the fact, it sort of lifts the veil, and it shows actually, even though we write them as two parts, they're not two parts. You don't have to write it that way. Let's just do these separately. Two and a seventh. Right, two and a seven. If my memory is good, I believe that's two point one four two eight. Someone help me out here. Someone got it there? Eight? Yeah. One? No. Five? Yeah. Five? Seven. Yeah. yeah. And then it repeats, I believe. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So there's the, the recurrent. Yeah, I, I play with numbers a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> There's the decimal expansion for 2 and a 7th. No big deal. Okay? Now, in the same way, you can write the decimal expansion for root 10. Okay, I have no idea what root 10 is, so help me out. Uh, it must be 3 point... 3 point what? 1, 6, 2. Give me a, give me a few. 1, 6, 2. 2. 7, 7. 6. Okay, done. Okay, good. Now, even though the first number is a recurring decimal and the second number is not, if it goes dot dot dot, then I can have as many decimal places as I like. Like my calculator stops, but it keeps going, right? So as a consequence, I can just I can add these two together just using like place value. Okay, um, what is this number going to be? Five point three. Can someone actually work? go ahead punch it in? Five point three five. That that'll do. Okay, good. So you can see. The tool of decimal expansion is super useful and it kind of re reveals actually that root 10 is not as separate as it looks. And that's why, you know, A plus B root N, you can have root N and root O and root P and root Q and whatever, as many of them as you like, but you can still do the same thing to them. You can still combine them. They're still one number. That's why they're still real. You can express them as a single decimal expansion. But we're not in real numbers anymore, we're in complex numbers. And so I hope you can see why these guys, they break apart this. They don't fit into this scheme, okay? Despite the fact that it's just a particular value of n, negative one, right? The square root of negative one, the imaginary unit, is so different to all the rest of the numbers that it refuses to play ball, right? It, it won't mix with the other numbers. No matter how you write it, it's always going to be a separate piece, okay? So we need a better definition for the complex numbers, okay, I said it was a single decimal expansion, and I also gave you a special name for that. Do you, do you remember what it was? Starts with an S. Scalar. A scalar, okay. So complex numbers refuse single decimal expansions. You need a pair of decimal expansions. And whenever you have a number that really is actually two numbers together, you need both of them. We don't call that a scalar anymore. Does anyone know what this is called? It starts with a V. Vector. We call it a vector. 
We'll come back to this vector idea later on, okay? All right, so you can see number one, we have expanded out our first definition from real numbers to complex. What was the second definition? Do you remember what it was? Very good. Any value that if you take a line, point on a line, right? I can say, well, any real number you like, even some of the weird ones. Let me just point out, um, you know how I gave you those uh, five, five, six equations that, that gave you the different kinds of numbers, different families of numbers? Even when you include the complex numbers, all those numbers you came up with are what we call, I can't remember if I mentioned this, did I say this before? No? Cool. Okay, we call them algebraic numbers. Unsurprisingly, because you use algebra to build the numbers, okay? There are some numbers, though, that you can't build with algebra. The non-algebraic numbers, they have a super fancy name. Starts with a T. Does anyone know what they're called? Even if you don't know what they're called, you know two of the famous ones. In fact, I got one of them on the board. Pi is a famous number that you can't build with algebra, right? There's no polynomial you can write where pi is the solution, if you just stay with those. Um, the other famous number that you know, which you can't do algebraically, is 8, 2.718281212, okay? These guys we call transcendental numbers because they transcend algebra, okay? Now, even the transcendental numbers, you can represent as a point on a line. They're there, right? E is between, uh, two and three, and pi is between three and four, it's in there somewhere, okay? But you can't do it with the complex numbers. You can't place the complex numbers just as a point on a line.